Hello, this is Angela with Peckers Permaculture. Welcome back to House Frau Friday. This is a bonus video today. I, um, well, first, lest you think that the house looks beautiful because you can see this tiny little corner of my living room. I'm working on folding laundry and a package has come. And so uh, while I'm folding all of the towels and things, I thought, let me take a break real quick and open this package and talk about the contents with y'all. So I've had a really hard couple of weeks and some of you know that I had a sale of a new knitting pattern and um, a set of dragon scale mitts that I have knitted. And they sold very, very quickly. And I wanna say thank you to everybody who bought a pair. You have helped me be able to afford a new laptop. I don't know if you all remember many months ago, my poodle Athena broke my laptop. Uh, she got tangled in the cord and pulled it off the desk and destroyed the hard drive. I've been working without a laptop since then and it's been challenging. And so I wanna say thank you to folks who uh, supported that sale. You have enabled me to be able to afford a new laptop. So I'm gonna be getting that really, really soon. So at the end of the sale, I had enough for a new laptop and then I also had a little bit left over, enough to purchase some new supplies to make more mitts because I was inundated with requests from folks who tried to buy a pair and they were sold out. So I wanna have another sale in the future. But then there was a little bit extra left. And if you know anything about me in real life, I am very, very, very obsessively frugal. Um, and and so I thought, well, okay, I'll just put it in savings because that's what I do. And my best friend Trish said, why don't you treat yourself to something? Life has been really difficult right now and um, you've worked really hard and, and what can you do to treat yourself to something? Now, some folks might think like a weekend away or a shopping trip. My first inclination was to go on thriftbooks.com and buy three books that I have wanted to own for probably 20 years. They're books that I've checked out from the library dozens of times and are, I believe, out of print. And so I said, you know what? Like, I'm gonna spend 30 bucks and I'm just gonna go hog wild and I'm gonna buy myself these books. So I wanna open them here because they might be relevant to y'all. I reference them quite a bit on this channel. So ThriftBooks, by the way, is a really great resource. The shipping is, is free. Um, it's like book rate shipping or whatever. And they have a huge selection of secondhand books. In permaculture, we always say, if you can buy something that is used, you are automatically being more sustainable because no new um, raw resources and no new water, no new carbon, no new petroleum were put into the manufacture of a new object. There might be some petroleum used in the shipping of a used resource, but overall the footprint is way smaller to take something that already exists and reuse it. So if you can buy used, that's always a better option. Okay, so let me open. Oh, it's obviously usually a more frugal option. Even when you're buying something that's, that's out of print, thrift books is pretty darn cheap. So you may think like, oh my gosh, you spent a lot of money, 30 bucks. Uh, these are all hardcover books. They don't come in, in um, soft cover. Forgive my like Christmas day, just shredding it. I'm very excited. So I reference her and her art quite a bit on this channel. I am a huge Tasha Tudor fan. And so I went and ordered three hardcover books about her and her life that, you know, this one's a little bit faded. They're from the early nineties, I think, which is, <sighs> a period my teenage years. And so I have quite a fondness for sort of all of those old books. Um, I hate to say old now, cause again, I was a teenager then, but they're old now. Old books like old Martha Stewart livings and old like, um, you know, country home magazines and old designer books for gardens and the home that are from the 90s. I just, I really love that aesthetic. So it's kind of like a double throwback. I'm having that throwback to the 1990s and then folks there are reminiscing about uh, and maybe having a little bit, bit of an anachronistic view of times gone by in the past. Times when homemakers were much more prevalent, when um, farming and homesteading in a rural agricultural way of life that was based around the home and farm was far more common when something like 30% of Americans were farmers. So I have a lot of nostalgia for books that were written in that time period about the 1800s, uh, big soft spot. So add to that Tasha Tudor, and I could not resist. Like I said, I've checked these out from the library a gazillion times. I got this one, The Private World of Tasha Tudor. Oh, let me back up. If you don't know who Tasha is, she's an illustrator and she lived in Maine. 
And she wrote a ton of books, Corgiville Christmas, A Doll's Christmas, a lot of Christmas books. She's probably most famous for her illustrated version of A Night Before Christmas. But all of her books have this kind of uh, throwback look at uh, times gone by. So like here she's wearing an 1840s outfit. Tasha lived an anachronistic life. She built her own home. She dressed in period garb from all through the, the 19th century. She kind of mixed and matched time periods. She didn't have electricity. She cooked on a wood stove. She used all antique china and pots and curated her life to be as if she was living in the 19th century. And you can say like, well, she was focusing on being a farm woman and a, a homemaker, but she was a profoundly talented artist who raised her children and supported them based on her art. She was a woman who for me was a career woman who supported her family on her income and also was obsessed basically with domesticity, with things of the home, with those simple, simple meaningful things that often capture the eye and the attention of, of homemakers, right? Of simple crafts, of knitting, of cooking, of uh, flower arranging, of gardening. And I really enjoyed all of her art and her books growing up. And I really enjoyed these books that were written about her and focusing on her real life as much as her art. I particularly as a teenager, I can tell I was a weird teenager, loved this book, Tasha Tudor's Garden. I obsessed over this book and over the years have checked it out from the library so many times. I had to buy it. I had to buy it. I thought, you know, this is a good time to treat myself to a book I will read over and over and over and over. It follows Tasha. I think she's in her 80s in this uh, book. It follows her throughout the, the year in her garden and what her rituals are in the garden, what her garden in Maine looks like, that she has planted all by herself, and how she interacts with and enjoys her garden space, how that work is meaningful to her, and the beauty and um, abundance that it brings to her life, not only in terms of the food that she harvests out of it, but especially the flowers, and also how it inspired her art. So, I absolutely love these books. I will link down below with the full information about them. But as I'm rambling here a little bit, the life and work of Tasha Tudor is something that I find incredibly inspiring, both as somebody that is a homemaker raising several children that is really interested in the appreciation and connection between a woman and her garden I find Tasha to be such an inspirational figure. And again, perhaps like a little bit of a mythological figure for a lot of us. I love her books, I love her eccentricities. And for me, taking the opportunity to invest in these books that I will use and enjoy seemed like a, a, a wise decision. So if you aren't really familiar with Tasha's work, I will link to a whole bunch of stuff below. A lot of her books, maybe you like me, uh, have read them to your, your children over the years and they're very familiar to your whole household, but maybe Tasha is brand new to you. She just epitomizes that kind of a woman that felt like she was born in the wrong era, that yearned for a more simple and sustainable life, detached from all the hustle and bustle of the modern age and wanting to connect with the slower, more intentional pace of life. And at the same time was living in the real world and having to support her family, family off of her artwork. So I have a lot of uh, sentimentality with these books and I thank you for coming along with me as I opened them. I hope that you can think about who are the folks that are those icons for you, either real or, or like semi-mythological figures that inspire you, that make you think, how is it that I wanna organize my life? What is it that I wanna focus on? Who inspires me? And how can I connect with that inspiration and maybe make real changes in my real life? So thanks for watching and I will be back very soon.